If you've ever been to an old lighthouse, you may have noticed the curious looking creation within the structure's peak. Looking at it, it's easy to think it would be more suited for an art museum than at the crest of a lighthouse. But these glass constructs, known as Fresnel lenses, were not merely created for their breathtaking designs, instead serving a great purpose for the maritime cities in the 1800s that earned it the name, the invention that saved a million ships. Lighthouses have been a staple of coastlines for thousands of years, as a way to guide maritime men from the dangers of the deep to the safety of the shore. Even before the first official lighthouse was created between 300 and 280 BC in Egypt, sailors used bonfires and even volcanoes to find their way home. For thousands of years, these lights served a crucial function, seeing countless improvements to shine brighter and longer. The source of light as well improved dramatically through advancements in fire and candle technology. However, this tech of the time had reached an impasse in the 1800s, as the gains in brightness became more and more marginal. Lighthouses could only be made so tall, candles could only be made so bright, and the next steps to electrical light were still decades away. The solution to this problem was almost deceptively simple. When light is created, it will, unless obscured, cover every surface in its path. It's one of the most well-known and no pun intended visible characteristics of the enigmatic energy. The question that many began to ask is, could the light of the lanterns that bounces harmlessly inside the lighthouse be redirected towards the waters, amplifying the already strong lanterns in use? This is where French scientist Augustine Jean Fresnel came in. Fresnel was not the first person to look into redirecting existing light for lighthouses. However, it was he who perfected the design, under the commission of Napoleon, and yes, that Napoleon. Fresnel was a brilliant scientist born on May 10, 1788 in Normandy, France. His work spans beyond just the lens that shares his name, including research that led to the acceptance of the wave theory of light. But the full story of the man will have to be a story for another time. With his initial prototype, Fresnel looked at redirecting light centered around a simple convex lens, and when tested, functioned well in small demonstrations at amplifying light. However, an issue arose when the design was upscaled to fit a lighthouse. To create a convex lens large enough to function in a lighthouse, the amount of glass would, counterintuitively, absorb much of the incoming light and its weight would be massive. It was the problem that stumped fellow scientists, but not Fresnel. His mastery of knowledge and the refraction of light proved to be the difference. So, how do you make an impossibly large object manageable? You take out the excess. And this is exactly what Fresnel did, creating a blueprint for the Lentier Echelon, which is lenses by steps, in 1819. At the time, there was already a proposed design quite similar to Fresnel's titled the Buffon Condorcet Brewster Proposal. However, unlike this British design, which called for a singular piece of glass, Fresnel's was made from multiple prisms, allowing for far easier construction. After several years of underfunding and prototypes, including testing done at the Arc de Triomphe, with the king at the time, Louis XVIII, in attendance, the Fresnel lens saw its first practical usage at the Cordouan Lighthouse, lit for the first time for the world to see on July 25th, 1823, four years after he first showcased his initial design. And it worked, its light visible for up to 20 miles away from shore. Two years later, and with an improved design featuring a fixed lens, a second Fresnel lens was set up at Dunkirk on February 1st, 1825. Fresnel a tireless worker continued to improve the design of the lens to maximize its distance, creating in 1826 what would be the definitive version of the lens, as well as his last. Sadly, Augustine Jean Fresnel did not get to live to see his invention reach worldwide usage, passing away on July 14, 1827, at the age of 39 of tuberculosis. Thus concluded an illustrious career for the scientist. 
a member of the French Academy of Sciences, Legion of Honor, and fellow of the Royal Society, the Fresnel lens continued to see modifications and improvements in the coming years, proliferating in usage throughout the 1800s, reaching a peak where it is estimated over 10,000 of the structures were in use. As technology improved, the Fresnel lens saw commercial usage on coastlines dimmer. However, if you ever run your hand against the clear surface of an old-school projector, you may have recalled how the hard plastic had a circular, rigid shape and feel. That is the Fresnel lens made hundreds of years ago, still at work today. And that is the albeit brief history of the Fresnel lens and its creator. To finish, I'd like to give a thank you to Augustine Jean Fresnel for making not only an invention that saved countless lives, but by showing us that science is, and always will be, beautiful. <laughs>